In this video, I'm going to share with you the six key pieces of information that you should definitely include on your resume if you want to stand out. And in case we haven't met yet, my name is Sarah Duty, and I'm a user experience designer and entrepreneur. I also help UX professionals of all stages of their career get a portfolio in place and learn how to articulate their work so that they can be awesome in interviews as well. My students have been hired at Home Depot, American Express, Salesforce, Microsoft, Amazon, Harvard, Salesforce, and a lot more that I don't have time to tell you about. But let's dive into your resume because recruiters and hiring managers on average are spending six seconds when they first glance at your resume. Now, I don't believe the resume is dead. I think it's still part of that crucial initial first pass, that vetting process, that elimination phase where you're either swiping yes or swiping no on candidates to use a dating analogy. So let's dive into these six crucial pieces of information. The first one that they're looking for is the job title of the roles that you have listed on your resume. What specifically was that job title? The next piece of information is the company name and summary. So this is really crucial and this is one step that I see a lot of people forget about, especially if the company that you worked at is not kind of a household name. So if you worked at Amazon, of course, I know what Amazon is, but if you worked at a local company that maybe no one's heard about or a startup or a big international company that maybe is not a household name, but it's a big deal in your industry or something, you need to explain that. So in addition to the company name, consider adding just a tweet length summary of what the company is. Maybe talk about the industry, maybe talk about the size, maybe even mention the department or a line of business that you were particularly focused on. Next are your employment dates and be as specific as possible. I think a good rule of thumb is month and year. I don't need to see the date, but definitely month and year. The fourth key information on your resume is your primary responsibilities. So what were you tasked with doing in your exact role? Now, this could come through in your bullet points, of course, your little snippets for each of the projects that you worked on in that role. Also, in kind of the bullet points that you give about each role, you should be mentioning some of those hard and soft skills. But a little tip here, don't be listing skills that are kind of like table stakes or a no-brainer. So for user experience designers, I often see people listing um, sketching, or um, wireframes. And it's kind of like, shouldn't you be able to sketch? Shouldn't everyone be able to make a wireframe? Um, so be careful not to just list kind of basic things for your role. Of course, it should be implied through the bullet points that explain what you did in that role, which leads us to the sixth piece of information, outcomes and accolades. Now, this really, really applies to these bullet points, and I have a little bit more detail I'm going to share with you, but don't just list uh, the bullet points kind of like a recipe of what you did. So going along with our user experience designer, I made prototypes, I made user flows, I made wireframes. That is basic. Instead, use those bullet points to tell me a little bit about those projects. So I created a clickable prototype for the new Amazon Prime uh, sign up user flow. I'm completely making that up. But that tells me a lot more than just having a bullet point that says user flows and wireframes or something. Along with outcomes of what you did, so maybe along that, uh, with that project example, you were able to increase subscriptions to Amazon Prime. That would be another thing you want to include. So the outcome of what you did. Mm -hmm. And then also accolades, meaning, uh, did maybe the project win awards? Did you receive great praise from your boss or colleagues? Maybe you were promoted as a result of the project. Think about things like that. That's gonna really help you stand out. Now, how this really relates to the layout of your resume, think of this little module at the left as one specific job listing. So this is 
uh, our time at Amazon as a UX designer. I'm completely making that up. But think about the layout and try and make the layout such that it's very easy for people to skim, scan, and pluck out these six key pieces of information. So in one glance, I could see at the left, I've got the job title. At the right, I've got the employment dates. And that second kind of horizontal box is for the company name and summary. And then below is representative of our bullet points. So they are conveying the primary responsibilities, hard and soft skills, outcomes, and accolades, okay? And you can see if you follow that pattern, the layout of that allows for the person looking at your resume to quickly and easily scan down the page, skim it, give it a glance, as we know they are, and they can quickly pluck out job title down the left, employment dates down the right, company summary, that top item in the box, and then the bullet points. And I will cover the exact uh, design principles and design tips for your resume. We don't have time in this video, so I'll make sure to link it below. But that is the information that you should be thinking about. Now, I wanna jump back to that outcomes and accolades because as I said, it's really crucial that you go beyond just stating the obvious. I make prototypes, I make user flows, I make wireframes, that's great. What is better though, is if you can cover questions like what problems did you solve for that project that you worked on redesigning the onboarding of Amazon Prime? Why did that neat project need to exist? What problems was it solving? Did your work help impact a key business metric? What was the outcome? Did it help increase signups? Did it help decrease drop off? What was the impact of that project? Now, in general, you should really try and quantify the work you are doing. So try to think of things like budget or timeline or team size. Numbers are gonna really jump out on your resume. Next is, have you helped save the company? Maybe time, money, did you simplify a process? Think of things like that. That's gonna really help you stand out. And finally, what did you do um, that your colleagues didn't do? What was kind of like a unique value proposition that you had that helped you stand out from other people on your team? I hope this video was helpful. And if you have a resume already in place, I encourage you to go back and kind of audit your own resume and think about if your resume as it stands right now is truly covering these six key pieces of information because recruiters and hiring managers literally are sending seconds on that first glance of your resume. If you want more help with your resume, Check out the playlist. I'm gonna link it below. I have about four or five, maybe more, uh, videos related to resumes to help you design a more effective resume, not just what it looks like, but with the content as well. And if you found this video helpful, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel or share it with a friend who might find it valuable. And do me a favor, answer me this. After watching this video, what is one change you can make to your resume right now so that it is more effective, it's communicating your skills in a stronger way so that you can stand out? So in the comments below, leave me a comment uh, and let me know the one change you are going to commit to making on your resume. Thanks a lot and I will talk to you really soon.